Hello everyone, we are This Is She Africa, my name is Petro, if you've been following us online then by now you should know exactly who um, I am and who She Africa is. And today we've got a very special guest from Namibia, we'll be speaking to Marie Jeanne from Physically Active um, Youth um, in Namibia. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Very good, thanks. How are you doing? Good, good. It's so good to be connecting with you. Um, for those, you know, like we met a while back purely by in coincidence um, in a magazine in Vinduk, in Vinduk Central. And um, imagine my surprise when I put the call out on Facebook to um, that I'm looking for women to interview really like dynamic, um, active women who are changing the world and changing communities uh, with their actions and, you know, their projects and what they're busy with. And somebody it connected us. Yes, I know, right? And when we started to speak, we, we remembered, but hey, we've met before. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And, and you look so well. You look good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. You. So, um, Marie Jean, you know, you you obviously you're whatever you're doing, it's working, and you're getting results, and um, and I'm so proud of you. You know, as a woman that's from Namibia, you don't often see this. You know, there are a lot of women out there, and they're busy with projects that we never hear about because they just don't get the support. And you've you've gotten the support. You've worked very hard, and you've gotten the support for pay. Um, and how does that feel? Um, I honestly think it's a formula <laughs> because <laughs> it's the formula and the formula is just keep screaming, shouting, doing, someone will notice yeah. you. And I, it's, it's honestly, um, it is the result or the, the function of tenacity of just keep on going. Someone will pay attention. A few minutes ago, just, just now, just before we got onto this um, a chat, somebody came here and he asked if he could have a look at the center. I showed him around. He was an elderly man. I'm embarrassed because I couldn't recognize him. And I asked him, um, so what's your interest? And he says, no, I'm a parliamentarian, but I've seen so much. Every time I go to an exhibition, I see something about it. So I just wanted to see if it was real. So because we didn't even know who he was, we let him, you know, he had carte blanche. He got to see everything and everybody. And I think that's what it is. When you put yourself out there and you keep doing it, people start to notice. It, unfortunately, it takes, it's taken a lot of time. It's taken 13 years for us to be in any way recognized or noticed or even just the value of what the the work is for the community but it's happening it's happening now we're at the happening stage so i'm not even complaining anymore yeah yeah that's amazing so um that, that, that's, that's just beautiful you know i love that like i love it when people recognize you and they acknowledge you and they actually make the effort to come out and see yes. what you girls are busy with you know um your team does it mostly consist out of women or do you have guys helping out in office Predominantly women, yes. Okay. Um, we have a, a running joke with, with a friend of mine that um, uh, with the work, I mean, we can't speak for everybody else, but with the work that we're doing and with, you know, the sort of like the transformation that you're trying to get, our experience has been that you work with women and with gay men. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly speaking, without even trying to be funny, but that's, that's what's worked for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's because, you know, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it. And once you make something, um, once you connect anything any project um to an emotion and to people that are emotional about it you know you get results um and i i've got this joke you know like not, not really a joke i'm actually quite serious when i say it you know like i keep on saying it walking around everywhere i go on the beach in town at home um when i'm sleeping when i wake up it's like women are changing the world you know it's not women, even a joke it's not yeah, a joke yeah, it's a real thing yeah. it's a real thing yes. it's a real thing. Yes. We, yeah. we, we recently um, had a, got a new president in March, you know, we have we have a new president and, and he set up a support structure. So he's got a team of advisors, right? And he's got a team of advisors on almost every area or ministerial area, line ministry. But he doesn't have one for education. Take note, all four ministers for education are women. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, and the permanent secretaries under them, but one are, are women. So the way I'm seeing it is even he knows that put it in the hands of women he knows it's going to be okay you know and i'm not even an extreme feminist but my experience has shown me so i grew up in a house i've got four I've, we have four girls i have three sisters my dad has nine sisters i went to an all girls school i went to the convent so i grew up with a lot of women so i didn't know that there was an exception i didn't know you had to try harder it's just the way that life has been for me and it's as i grew older and started to work that i started to experience i mean i, I gave equal opportunity person like I gave I was an equal opportunity provider but my experience has been that women get it done 
petrol. They get mm. it done. You know what I yeah. mean? They get it done. They're rats. Mm. They get rid of them. You, you see what I'm trying to explain to you? The toilets are broken. They don't know how. When you come, the toilets are fixed. It's not a mm. case of, you know, bureaucracy, excuses, and so forth, you know? Oh my gosh, I'm sounding too too strong about it, but yeah. No, get it. no, I love it. No, I love it. I love it. Women, women are changing the world. I agree. I'm with you on that. And you know, and we welcome and invite the guys who who are doing it as well. You know, come and speak to She Africa. Come and speak to Marie Jean. You know, get yourself out there. Get yourself amongst the women that are changing the world because this is happening. You know, things are happening. Everybody's been talking about it. People have been fighting about it. There's been. You know, all sorts of stuff going on about women getting into power, you know, from raping to killing to acknowledging to like nurturing it, you know. So it really is a very, very big political and social um, movement at the moment going on. And you can and see we, the change. We need, to push. we need to push it. I think as women, we need to push ourselves in that space. Yeah. Um, again, with the, with the political string to this, I'm just going to share it. Now. It's my last story I'm sharing. I'm, I'm going to share it now. <laughs> Which was very important for me. It was two years ago. So the, the ruling party decides they're going to have a zebra approach. Woman, man, woman, man. And there was so much resistance and oh my goodness, they were public lectures from here to Timbuktu. And um, and these were like academics and politicians and well-respected men who, who were opposing this, you know. And, and I stood up and I said to them, I said, I mean, with all due respect, sir, I just, I would like you to take note that because his argument, which I felt was unfounded with one of the public lectures was that you belong, Namibia is a Christian nation, so you belong to your father and then you belong to your husband. And I said, sir, with all due respect, that said, the majority, 72% of the households are run by women. So the father was not there to begin with. The majority of these women grow up to be single, single mothers. So no, there is no husband, there is no partners. And then these same men want to go and write policies on education, on health, on, on shelter, for a group of people they don't know and they haven't been taken care of. There, my friend, is where we are having a disconnect in the process and in the policy. You cannot make policies for people you don't understand. So the women who have to take care of the children, who have to heal the children, who have to do all of these things, let them make policies that make sense because it's practical for them. It's not a theory that they're reading in a book. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah. I yeah. am completely in line with you, um, Marija. And you know, I had this thing this morning in my head, and I said, "Women have to stand together. If we don't come out of the houses and out of the rooms and out of where we'll be hiding, you know, under the under the rocks, under with that mentality of, um, I'm safe, so that's okay. I'm not yeah. going to get involved in anything else because I'm safe. You know, that's bullshit. Because you have to go get involved. Women on this planet have to stand together now more than ever." to really, really make a difference and change the way things are. I read this morning, um, I was, I don't even know where, I was online, busy working, busy preparing for the interviews, and then um, something popped up on the screen and I saw like two women being sentenced um, to be gang raped. Um, gang raped. This is, and this is in India, you know, um, as punishment for something that their brother has done. And even though that's anti, even though that's against the law, you know, with a country that's that big, um, even in Africa, you know, even though the laws are in place, there are community laws and everything else is happening very hush hush and low key, you know. And and that got to me, and I thought, I have to, I have to do something. She Africa has to do something because being online isn't enough. Speaking to people online and asking them to click a box or tick a box or like petition or whatever, it isn't enough. We no, have I, to physically, we have to go into the homes and get the women out and get them into communities. And those communities connect to larger communities that connect to larger communities. That you have a global community of women standing together saying, no, no chief. No president, no this, no no whatever's governing me as an individual, as a as a beautiful nurturing mother, sister, you know, daughter of someone. Just no on 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 something like that happening. But Marijan, we can. I'm going to interview you again on something like that, and we can talk about that. But for now, I really want to talk about your program. So okay. let's before we go off key, let's let's get to that. Okay, let's get to pain in Namibia. Tell me about pain and Namibia. Tell me about your results. Tell me about 
where everything happened um, and where you are now. Do that. Okay. I am at Pain Namibia right now. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting in the courtyard. So this is actually very risky. Anytime now, 100 kids can come and storm on <laughs> onto Fantastic. this conversation. Fantastic. Yes, they're in, they're in their classroom. So um, I started it with Dr. Zeeland in my final year of university. That would be end of 2002 and 2003. We started to have an after-school program. And the idea was to, to see the role of sports with, at youth risk. And it was a one-year program. It was just, you know, for, for study purposes. And honestly speaking, it was so successful. And I personally got so involved in in um, the process of having kids come every day and figuring it out and understanding why 54% of our children are failing grade 10. And when we saw that at the end of the year, 90% of our kids failed, I was like, oh Lord, it doesn't have to be this way. You know what I mean? The doing part you were speaking of. So we started to, to open up the center more. And over the years, what has happened is through a lot of trial and error, this program model has come in. And so the program model is simple. Kids come in every day. We have hundred kids that come, they get some food, we do schoolwork. We have highly qualified teachers at the center, plus support staff of volunteers. So that's between 2 and 4.15. 4.15, they go to sports until 5.30, Monday to Thursday. Fridays, we have life skills. And um, we have trimester camps, so leadership, environmental education, something. And there's always a theme. Um, and the space is pretty. So like if you go onto our Facebook page, you'll see that we just had school holidays and everybody was painting and making it nice. And even if you come from a poor environment, it doesn't have to be ugly. You know, how do you make your mm -hmm. space beautiful? And mm -hmm. the ethos, the ethos for us is work on the whole person, work on the whole person, give them an opportunity. And um, why do we do this? Because for me or for our understanding is that if you're going to break the cycle of poverty, you if you're going to if you're going to improve communities it has to come from that place where not only are you teaching someone how to to fish but you're also teaching them to love themselves and to think about the world differently and it's always it fills me with so much pride this has been 13 years when you come across someone who's been in the program they always stand out they're always different you know mm -hmm. and my thing is always just because you put doesn't mean that it has to show you don't have to be that way you you can still be somebody who you are proud of and who other people want to associate themselves with it. You can still have social mobility because you can articulate yourself in your language and the official language, which in Namibia happens to be English. And you can, you know what I mean? You can, you can be that person. You can be the best that you can sincerely, that you were sincerely meant to be, you know? So that's what we do. And that's why we do it. And that's how we've been doing it for the last 13 years. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. You know, do you have children? Biological children? No. No, no, no. Adopted? Um, I have kids that I take care of. Yes. Okay. Yes, no, I no. Do. But yeah, well, that comes yeah with the, with the thing. No, because you know what I find interesting is that you're quite often you'll find that women who don't have children, maybe they're not married. You know, single women, they just have they feel this requirement to go out into the world and be, be the mother, for those that don't have, have a mom. Or be the, the 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 leader, you know, or be, just be in these children's lives because their parents neglect to be there the way that they should be. They neglect to fight for them. They neglect to to um, speak up for them, you know, to demand better. And and women like you are amazing. Thank you. I, I'm going to speak to that on from three just three different things. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak yes. to what you see. Yes, one, yes, yes. One is um. I realized a long time ago that I wasn't going to be, I couldn't do both for a while. Setting up and just being, getting to a stage where we're stable. I, over the years, I realized what it takes to be a mom and I want to be involved and engaged in that process. And, and setting this up, as simple as it sounds, you know, <laughs> it was difficult, it's been, it's been challenging. I think I'm at a point in the next year or so I can say, oh, I can have children now because this is something that's stable, this is something that's running, it doesn't require me being a hustler, you know? That's mm -hmm. one side of it. Um, the other side of it is, as I said to you, I've worked with different people all along and there was somebody who worked in and took over for me for about a year and things didn't go so well. And then he said, yeah, but Marjan, I don't know how to nurture, you know? Mm. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean you don't know how to nurture? I said, I'm an accountant. You're an anthropologist for crying out loud. You have more, you're more inclined to this kind of understanding people and so forth. Anyway, back and forth for like a year. And he's like, yeah, but. Nurture is something that, one, you need to have received it. So 
you've been socialized in such a way that you've learned to take care of people to because you've been taken care of so it comes naturally to you and you're a woman so from that perspective i hear you and i see that it it, it really does it does make sense you know and um our maternal instinct comes out to play when we're doing this kind of thing especially and it's so interesting because there are 100 children and sometimes when you fight that's the that's the energy that comes in you know i remember going into the prime minister's office once by force literally and i think to myself you're crazy but it is that it's that maternal instinct where you're like these children yeah. matter for crying out loud they yeah. matter can you, please, can you please help us make something happen here yeah yeah they do they do yeah and you yeah. know like i i hope that there's somebody like you in every country in africa and in the world um fighting for kids like this fighting for them to reach their potential you know to live their purpose to find out what it is that they're good at and to really like go out there and and accomplish you know and evolve into a sustainable human being that can that can better the way things are in that community or that country um i want to read something marijan from there i'm gonna and for the pink sugar guys sorry guys i'm on your page and i'm gonna read it um you wrote something that poverty is something we create through our negligence and our refusal to connect to the next human being's story. Oh, yes. oh I've forgotten about that. Yes, yes. Um, I think, they, and again, there are two sides to the story. I think when, when I look at the community that I come from, I think that people who come from middle class and upper middle income and so forth communities, they feel so far removed. It's not something. It's, it's, it's such a different story. They're not even connected to this. They, they see there's another world. Then there's also the other story where people come from poverty and they want to have absolutely nothing to do with it. So they, it's, it's, it's almost a conscious choice to say, boom, I've, I've just barely made it out of there. I want to have absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, and, um, and yet we forget that my story you know, your story, you know, this, this is what makes the world go round, you know, and something that happened in this taxi that made somebody drop this seed and now there's a fruit and I pick up the fruit one day when I'm walking, you know, we're so connected. And I think that if, if I choose to be conscious about what's your story, Pedro? Okay, so you went to the lives, so you did this. And I genuinely want to hear what the story behind that is, you know, why? Because I know I have an Nepalese friend who also, you know, he's, summited a few times and maybe you could get together and something could come out of it. And that's because I think what you're telling me is important. I think what um, Shushmita is doing is important. And you know what I mean? And I think that it will also enrich me because we've been co we're connected. I think that we are in denial. We are in so much denial about how interconnected our worlds are. You know what I mean? And that yeah. if the world is supposed to be a better place, then we need to be connected. That's the only way it will happen. I think... Um, if we speak about education and the work that we do, and everybody seems to always think that it's, it happens in it happens in um, really poor communities where it has absolutely nothing to do with them. In a few years' time, when you have criminals on the street and you you can't walk in what was once oh it used to be so safe yeah okay it used to be so yeah. safe but you let three hundred and fifty thousand kids go as dropouts you yes. know so it's encroaching yeah. you so that's why it's your business you know yeah. that's why it's your business that that teacher far away in the township is teaching. Yeah. You understand because it's yeah. it's, it, it's that person or, or, or whatever they're coming from they could be the teacher they i mean they could be the thief or the rapist that could alternatively be your doctor your nurse your teacher you know what i mean exactly and, I think that, and that's the conversation that we fail to have that that's that's how interconnected we are you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah i agree with you i do um yeah well yeah yeah you can go on anything else you want to say you can go on i completely agree you know, like I think education, when you bring education into it, when you bring love into it, when you bring nurturing yeah. into it, it's just love. love just changes things, Completely. you know. And when you take the judgment out, because, you know, growing up in Namibia, especially in the time that we grew up, because I think you and me were the same age, it was very racist. It was extremely racist, you know. What? Like I, I, I couldn't have a black friend. I couldn't bring, I couldn't bring a black friend home. You know, it was it was frowned upon. Like, um, I couldn't. You know, you couldn't make jokes about it. You couldn't, and and that's also where the gap came in. You know, it's like we wanted to nurture as children, and then we grew up and we were kept from that. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I remember I had this crazy idea. You know, I wanted to bring orphanages and kids' homes together with like 
what I call people that call themselves normal people, normal society, you know. And everybody, everywhere I go in Namibia, everywhere where I have an idea that I've presented to people, they go like, oh, Pedro, that's never going to work. You know, oh, Pedro, you can like, that in here. Say it again. They always, they always go like, oh, Pedro, that's never going to work. You know, don't, don't exactly. think about stuff like that. It's never, but somebody has to think about the things that we think about because you're also a thinker. You know, you're a pioneer. You go out, you venture into the world and you think about how, um, to solve things, you know, um, Marie-Jean, that, that's what makes you an entrepreneur, the entrepreneur that you are, you know? Yeah. Um, so I actually look for those conversations where people go like, oh, Petra, that's not going to work because then I know it will. I know that if somebody gives enough intent on it and enough work on it, that it will work. You know, that you can change something where there's a problem or you can bring a solution to the table. I know that anything's possible given that people invest in it. Um, and that's my next question to you. Jamie, who, who, who has been like your biggest supporters in Namibia? Um, From my organization? One, yeah. yeah, my one constant supporter would be um, my chaplain, because I started this at university. So the, the, the Catholic priest, the chaplain at university, uh, Father Richard, continuously, um, to this day, honestly speaking, I think on a tough day, I can still go to him and ask him for $2,000. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he also yeah. understands the process and the whys and the whens. And it started off when I was 17. My parents were so upset because at a certain point, we'd all stop going to church. And they were trying to find all sorts of creative ways to keep us going to church. And they took us to the seminary. And we met this um, this American guy. This is Father Richard I'm telling you about. And he had a sermon that spoke to me. And that fundamentally changed how I do things because he told the story of a basketball player who I can't remember his name. I think he was Italian in the sixties in the NBA. And he was apparently when he was off season, he was quite, quite the drinker, drinker, smoker, womanizer. He was short, but during the season he was really good. He was on point. I think he was a point guard or whatever he was, but bottom line is he was really good at what he did. And this said and done, they asked him, but you're such a, you're such a casual drinker and you're such a, you know, you're such a, smoker how is it that when you come on season all of a sudden you get into shape and this guy goes to explain no everything he does he does it from his heart and when you do things from your heart things work out from that space of love he goes i love it i love the ball i love the court i love the women i love the cigarettes i love the alcohol <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yes, exactly and so that for me at the age of 17 made me think that whatever I do, I need to do it from my heart. And so this is why I think I've, I've remained in close relationship with, with, with Father Richard. So I've had a lot of people that have come. And at first, a lot of people also shunned the work that I did because they thought I was crazy, you know. For the longest time, my parents, my family, my friends, like, get a real job. It's, it's, it's cute. It's been a year, two years, get a real job, you know. And um, I'd studied or I have studied accounting. So they were like, get a real job go to PricewaterhouseCoopers, go do something. You know what I mean? And I didn't. And eventually, what was very important was eventually my whole community, my friends, my family, they all turned around and they started to support me. But it meant I had to stop being ashamed of the choices I'd made. I think for the longest time, I was also ashamed, for a lack of a better word, because I was like, why am I also not doing a real job? Why am I, so, why am I doing this when I could be making more money, doing something more, more important? You understand? Mm. And... And, and then one day I was like, no, you know, I, I, I call it my coming out of the closet. I was like, no, this is who I am. This is what I've chosen to do. I am absolutely proud of the work that I've chosen to do. I am proud of the communities that I work with and take me as I am, you understand? And that changed things. Then all of a sudden, my, I have to say, it started with my, my sisters were so supportive and my parents who I think, ugh. You know, they moved from that to really being involved, like completely engaged in whatever way that they could be. And, and all of these things that everybody's starting to hear started to happen from that point, you know, from the point of saying, this is, this is what I'm putting out there and this is what I'm proud to do. And then my friends, oh, they have been amazing. You have never seen. They go to war for, for the cause. I mean, it's not for me necessarily as an individual, but for the cause. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I call it, um, I have something that I'm working on and I call it when you... It's like falling in love, but falling in life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then I have the sort of life in like a little heart, you know? Because everybody goes through this, like you go through this where you, where you, where you sort of like, um, it's very contradicting, like money, 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 be successful, successful, or what is my life's purpose? And this seems like this is, 
this is your life's purpose. This is what you have to do, you know. And when you when you mix that um, with with your emotions and with people and creating change, you know, life falls into place, and and, and you can do what you want to do. Yeah, and, and it and, does. And things are falling into place, but you have to be ready for it, right? You have to yes. be. Ready. That is so true. You have to be ready for it because once yeah. it comes, it is like a wave of just abundance. Yeah. Okay? Abundance, yeah. yeah, and hard work and everything that goes with all the success stories. Um, Mojan, you've had times, we, I, I know you've had times because I, I listened to your TED talk and I, twice actually oh, and, okay. um, and I've read through your website and you've had times where you really just wanted to give up. I mean, you, you've had it, like you know, like because... All of us, we can only take so much. Yes. You can only take so much. You know, did you ever feel like you just wanted to give up, get out, go away, move away, go and live high up in the mountains, never speak to another soul? Um, did you ever feel like that? Too many, too many, too many times to even share, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I have felt, yeah. I have felt, yeah, I have felt like that. I have... On many occasions, woken up and thought, "I'm not going back to that place." <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 I'm not. I'm yeah. just not going back. To that. I'm just not going back to that place. It's not. I'm it's not for me. Yeah. 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 Because I find that when you're busy with, you know, work that's this important and things don't work out, we we're so hard on ourselves. You know, and we, I mean, I have like a project, you know, when we met, I was busy with other projects and, and when that yeah. didn't work out, I was so hard on myself, you know, like I didn't go and see people, I didn't want to, I didn't want anything to do with anybody, I just wanted to be on my own, tucked away, away from the world, not being seen, not being heard, you know, like really, like I was just so hard on myself and it's so unnecessary. You internalize it, right? You think like yeah. you're the failure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and then I had a very long chat with myself, and then I thought, well, well, look at what other people are doing. They're not doing anything. You've at least gone out into the world, and you've at least put yourself out there. Who cares if it worked or not? It didn't work, you know. Mm. You've at least got. And everywhere that I've been, I've created change. Whether it was one person or two people or a group of people, you know. For me, what was more rewarding was somebody coming to me and saying, "Thank you. Um, that's changed my life." And I'm going to make better choices now. So, yeah. And I'm sure that you've had that. I'm sure you've had so many people come to you and say thank you um, for honoring me. And, and I, I would like to honor you back. And um, I'd like to pay, you know, pay it even back. I mean, I'm sure that your students are going to be great supporters and doing amazing things one day. Um, and all because of you. Yeah, that... that I think about that. <laughs> I do think about. I do think about that. Um, I think for me, one of the the biggest challenges has been, and you spoke about it. It's been what success is, right? So yeah. success is about the lives you've touched. Then okay, there's been success, but part of success. I mean, we live in a world where you know monetary terms are so important, and that that has been the biggest burden. You know, I think as soon as I mentioned the word money, like oh, something happens. <laughs> Yeah. How am I going to come up with hundred thousand dollars for this month? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the next, and next month. And sometimes you mess it up. And sometimes you make it work. And sometimes it works for four months, and then you have a down month again. And then sometimes you have two down months and three down months. And it doesn't. It doesn't. It hasn't come to that stage where, as I said to you, like I think we're getting there, but it hasn't come completely flat. And what I really need to understand, and I'm telling myself this, is I can't internalize that process, you know, because my goal is transforming lives. But it's taken me a long time to, to get there. But I, I hear you. And then I also don't go out. So I've got phases where I don't I don't leave the house, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well I have very quiet it's what it seems like I have very quiet years. Okay. And then all of a sudden I have a brain brain wave. And then I'm like, no 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 I need to be out there. I need to do everything, you know? And um and I'm actually at one of those those phases in my life now where I'm sitting and thinking very carefully of what the next move is. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. Because once I crawl out of my out of my my cave, it has to be big. It has to be transformative. It has to be life changing. I literally have to rock the light out of you into the world. 
Um, yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, what is the point, you know? Um, Marijan, who would you like to see supporting you? I mean, you know, talking about organizations, big companies, individuals, Namibia, communities, who would you like to see come up to you and support you? You know, um, in different categories, I would, I think my first point of support, I wish would be the communities to work in, you know? I wish that the, the, the communities would have more buy-in to the process. It's so interesting. The kids have complete buy-in so often, but the parents don't, they don't even understand what this is and what it could do and what it could do if they also supported it. Because what it could do is they could, the parents could use this as a political card. I mean, we've got regional and local government elections coming up right now, you know? Mm. I, that's, I really, if there's something that I wish I could do, and I was speaking to my sister, I wish I could make this message so simple that, because then they would stand up. The parents that have been, the community members that have benefited from it, they go to great lengths, but they're so few. So I wish that that is something I could have. I. Mm. I wish that um, as, a, as a nation, sincerely speaking, whether it's a corporate sector, it's government, if we could all see that if we follow this program model, we end the cycle of poverty. And it's possible in Namibia and other countries, I would, I would be hesitant to say that if we had 50 million mm. people. But for yeah. 2.1 million people, I say, we all come on board, we end that cycle of poverty, like in 10, 15, 20 years. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, yes. And so that's why I feel like this should be something that we all do together as a nation. And to heal those wounds that you spoke about. You, we spoke about like, you know, having grown up in the 90s, as you spoke, I, I, could, I, I, had, I had shivers going down my throat. <laughs> yeah. Remembering my high school experience and thinking, Lordy Lord, how did I get through that? And so even issues around race and, and issues around gender and stuff, when we come together like this, we heal. You know, because we're building for each other. You know, and and as, the sooner we recognize that, when when you build me and I build you, it is our collective interest. It's not that I'm some sort of messiah on a horse and whoa, your life is better, Pedro. No, no, yeah. no, no. Because yeah. you're better, so your home is better, so your community is better, so our nation is better. You know, mm -hmm. it is that that's the connection I was speaking about earlier. That's that's the connection. That's that's the part that. That's the part that ends the poverty bit. And I think that that's what I would love to see happening. And you know, when I was in Namibia now, I spoke to um, a, someone, I met a guy um, who owns Tobik, um, oh, you know, like I don't really want to mention people, but but yes, yes. he owns Tobik um, Optics in Vinduk and Ochivarongu and, um, and Rindu. And he's from South Africa, uh, married to a Namibian girl, lives in Namibia now, you know, and he said to me, because we had a very long drive together, the one day and he said to me, Petra, like I see so many people in Namibia with the potential to be anything, to do anything, but due to a lack of education that they receive, they don't know how. Don't know and how. he said, yeah, that, and you know, when he said that to me, I was like, that just, it really, really hurts. Mm. It really hurts, you know, because Namibia is one of the developing countries now and I go back every time and I see the changes, you know, and it's becoming big and there's a lot of investors and not necessarily like the good kind, okay? But the things that matter as far as education, because when I was in school, we were getting, we were getting okay education, standard, but I, as an individual, didn't get anything that I was interested in. You know, I wanted the arts, I wanted music, I wanted theatre, I wanted something that was bigger than just what they were presenting. And the way that they were presenting it was boring. You know, I mean, I, I, I was so bored in school, really, really very bored, you know, with the teachers, the way that they were teaching. Where did you go to school? In Ochivarongu. Okay. Very, you know, very small town, you know, and they were good teachers. They were very, very good, but I was just so incredibly bored. Um, and this is what I call, but certain people are just, they're like almost futuristic, you know, like they see that there's a different way. And then yes. being a girl at that time as well and being told, no, you can't take this and this and this subject, you know, oh. um, and then giving preference to the guys, that was also like a bit like, it really pissed me off. Yeah. For yeah. lack of a better word, you know, it really got to me. And um, so, yeah, so maybe that was, you know, what caused me to sort of like create She Africa and sort of like be like this woman connecting with other women and going out there and wanting the world to be like, you know, like um, all women empowerment, you know, really. But yeah. more than women empowerment is really just to create a balance between men and women and to say that if we are going to be equal, let's be equal, you know. 
everywhere, full out, like all around. Let's just be equal when it comes to things. And I think Namibia is pioneering in a direction. Um, you know, it, it really, I mean, I go back and people are a bit more educated now um, from both sides. And that's nice to see. It's nice to speak, you know, walk around in town and have the scholars pass you, you know, the ones in university or studying and just sitting, because that's what I do, you know. And I remember when we met, I'm a conversation starter. So when somebody walks into a room and I just, I have this need to just speak to them, you know, and you were one of them. Like, I just, I remember you coming in, sitting down next to me, and I just had to talk to you. I was like, but you really stop this nonsense, you know. And then I just went like, hi. And and that's me, you know. Um, and I listen to conversations. And when I went back to Namibia, now there's a lot going on there. A lot of educated people. A lot of people, you know, it's all businessy. Everything's business, 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 business. So, um, and I admire that, you know. Uh, but I also think from the education side, like, that's happening outside, not in education. So exactly. when and I it's say, not sustainable yeah. and it's for a very small group of people, right? Yeah. 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 So when I say, Marie-Jean, like, be the invitation for these companies, you know, to come along. Like, if you can think of five companies that you would like to see um, support you, who would they be? Really large organizations. Um, even if they've said yeah, even if they've said no to you before, name them. You know. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. one of these building companies that could come in and renovate for us and put a double story space. That would be one. Two, a food company. Maybe actually, if we can pay or one of those who would supply us with our supply of food for a year. You know. Um, so that's the food. We've got that sorted. Um, I'm assuming that with food comes all, all the other things for the center, like the, the cleaning materials and things, so groceries. Um, three, I would like, you know what I would like? I would like, um, and it's not really, but I'd love the Ministry of Home Affairs, to, uh, Home Affairs to make it so much easier for us to get work permits. When I have international mm -hmm. volunteers, I spend so much energy trying to get work permits, and they even get denied sometimes. Um, yes. I would like, yeah, so that would be very good for me. I would like... Um, I would like to have universities around the world send me some of their best teachers, like just best teachers. I'd love just, I want that experience and the best, and not just the best teachers, but the best um, coaches for our program. I would, oh, I would love cars. My goodness. I would go to Toyota, wherever Toyota headquarters are, and we could have enough <laughs> with petrol <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that's the thing like when you really start thinking about the things that you want because i also have to make that list and boy oh boy have i received no's i mean i have received so many no's from companies and organizations you know but that's the fun of it that's actually going out there and saying to them look yeah this is what we need this is what for social obligation political obligation you know being humane just creating a change you know this is what we need and um yeah, so I hope that whoever's watching this, that they will actually go out there and invite these companies to your premises and to your organization and to wherever you are to see what you guys are creating and, and changing, you know. And I wouldn't even go to Toyota. I'd probably go to somebody with like a hybrid car, you know. Let's be let's be better than, than what it is Toyota now. Toyota has a hybrid car. Toyota has a hybrid okay. car. I remember I was a hybrid oh, car ago, and it was a Toyota. So, no, yeah. Oh, I think for, yeah, for me, they, it's just like if... What, I just wish we could have a big hybrid car, like one that could take masses of children. So yeah. when we go for and that kind of thing. So that, that's, mm -hmm. that's what you want. You want someone who says, you know what, MJ? I'll cover your salaries. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you need that, you know, like if you, because if you, if you're educating people, you should actually get um, subsidiary from the government. Like that's actually where, you know, I often say like, I hate paying tax. I do. I really don't like giving my money to the government, you know, and especially in a corrupt government. And I often thought about, like, show me the breakdown. Show me, like, show me the boxes. Let me see where the money goes to. And let me tick the box where I want to send my money to, you know, because I really mm -hmm. didn't want to get, like, I don't want to give my money to the government and then see them flying jets and building houses and, like, sending their kids off to private schools while the rest of the country is still broken and not getting anywhere. Um, so, yeah, so you should actually get in there. Marie Jean, you know, and get some of that budget going on there for your organization and for your children and for your kids. Yeah. 
So, and I'm pushing really hard on that one. I really am. And yeah. I, I think this is, this is the time. I think it's going to happen now. It really is. So with all your projects that you've got going and people, you know, you can, I'm just going to click on here. You can go to, there's, um, she's got two websites. The one is www.paynamibia.org. Um, and the other one is, I actually don't know how to pronounce that one. Can you, can you help me with that? Okay. That's Twamanguluka. <laughs> okay. Twamanguluka.org. Yeah, means we are free. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Fantastic. Cause I'm, I'm looking at that as well. And it says lives matter. From Anguluka, we are free um, exist to promote the upward developments of African youth at large using holistic methods. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So it's two so that's, projects. That's, that our, that's our enterprise arm. So that's where we make money yeah. to running this. Yeah. Okay. So that's two projects that you're busy with, and both with the same vision and mission, um, and then ultimately points back to to the children, right? That's correct. And the yeah. t-shirts. Let everybody get interested in ordering t-shirts. We're trying to sell t-shirts. <laughs> Sell a million t-shirts. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, and who's, who's yeah. sponsoring the t-shirts? You know what? Up until now, we've actually bought the t-shirts ourselves. Oh, so, that's bad. Yeah, I like, um, t-shirts sell them. Yeah. What I find is in the world that certain projects work and certain projects don't. And when you go online and you look at YouTube videos and you look at Facebook pages and Twitter pages, quite often the people that are creating change in the world have got very few followers and the people that are doing crazy funny like just really not very important stuff have got millions billions of followers you know and that just <laughs> blows my mind if we could put all of that to purpose okay equals like let's get an outcome of something really powerful amazing potent um, that would actually make my day you know that would make my day because yeah, it seems like you have to really just film your child eating um, porridge and then that will get like a million views. I don't know why. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, you can tell me, being an anthropologist, you could, you could probably tell me better. Jean Marie, there's one more um, quote that I want to do because I've got to prepare for my next interview. But let me just find this. I want to quote you. I think that once we stop with the posturing and start addressing the issues from the grassroots by making sure that each learner is given holistic education in order for them to discover their talents, develop critical thinking skills, and be innovative, only then will our country, Namibia, become a model for Africa and the world at large. You should quote that, you know. You should put your name yeah, behind all of these little quotes. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you should. I mean, I've, I've been reading through this article. Um, I agree. I agree. You know, I agree. And I applaud you on that because more women like you should get up, speak up, get educated, and do something about it. You know, and I'm gonna. I'd love to connect you with a teacher, also on TEDx that I saw. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, but I have to go and find her first. It's a teacher somewhere in America, and um, you know, like I almost feel like the teachers there. They first have to go to army training before they go to school because some of the schools are just. It's just like it's so violent. You know. The war zone. Yeah, but one of her one of her mottos was. Um, People come to you with a problem and she says, um, so what? Now what? Isn't that amazing? I you like know? that. So, yeah, what, now? so what? Now what? What are we going to do now? Where are we going to create the change now? You know, I'm definitely mm. going to connect the two of you or just send you the link and you can connect with her on your own. Um, you know, because I think the two of you could definitely be mutual friends um, in the world and learn and you know, share what you know. But, I think, I'm going to read this again. I think that once we stop with the posturing and start addressing the issues from the grassroots by making sure that each learner is given holistic education in order for them to discover their talents, develop critical thinking skills, and be innovative, only then will our country become a model for Africa and the world at large. Would you like that's to comment? That's my gospel. <laughs> that's my gospel right there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the gospel by my Jean de Vera. I really, you can't just, that's it. That's exactly what I believe. That's the reason why I get up every morning. That's my, that's my story. And I'm sticking oh, to it. it. Yeah. And there it is. That's the reason why I get up, why I get up in the morning. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Jean-Marie, um, is there anything that you would like to say still online? You know, like I have to finish up and I have to go on um, and prepare for my next um, interview. But 
on She Africa, we create a space where we um, allow women to be the invitation for whoever's watching, whoever's going to be watching this, for themselves, for us, um, to get involved. And is there anything that you would like to say um, and be the invitation of at this moment? Well, you know what I would like to say? Um, I, I, and I shared this with my younger sister two weeks ago. I said, um, so often as women, it's interesting. I don't know if we're socialized that way, but there is an element of distrust. Like I see you doing something and I'm like, oh, you know, you know, you're like, you're not sure. You first like, you know, you scuffered it. But I, I think my, my lesson has been because we do do a lot as women and we do get a lot done. The idea is to support her. You know, even if I don't like you, I will support you because you're a woman who's doing work that you will probably see to fruition, you know? And whatever my reservations may be, let me take time during my point of meditation to question, what is my reservation about? Have I been socialized as a woman not to trust another woman, you know? Have I, you know, what is it that makes me naturally respond or respect or support a man and yet that doesn't come as naturally towards a woman you know that's that's something i just like to say to the other women out there I was like let's really just support one in, one another as, as sisters as as people who make the world a better place we make the world a better place because the world comes from us these children come of us you know through us yeah that's my big thing right now and just have the courage to do it the world is always a better place because you've had courage yeah. 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 So basically, yeah. So basically, the invitation is just to just um, get involved. You know, yeah, open cool. up, get involved, don't be so. Because look, we're not always going to get along. You know, not everybody's going to get along. You know, we live in a planet where we're still working, working, and evolving towards that. But now there's so much hurt and indoc indoc um, indoctrination and things that are going on behind the scenes that people are still dealing with that they don't even know that they're dealing with. So. But as women, you know, whether you like the person or not, if that's a project that's good and it's changing the world, get behind it. Okay. And I find that a lot. I find that a lot with the with the networks that I'm busy with is people. This one wants to be better than that one. That one wants to be better than this one. This one doesn't really trust you, so they don't really want to um, mm. open up. You know. But I've said to women's organisations, I said, let she Africa be she Africa. And come under the wing, you know, we're small, but let's join up. Let's join all the organizations together and come and be on the directory so that we can find you, so that the women can find you, because all of us don't do the same job, you know, like nobody, there's not one of us that does exactly the same, in the same way. Okay. Yeah. You have to go anyhow so yeah so people get involved you know get involved in projects that inspires you and that can change the world and that can change yourself and allow you to be a better person so that you can shine that towards the world and bring that out in other people um mary john i'm so happy and thrilled that you have accomplished what you've set out to do and that you're still working very hard to do that and i'd love to have a follow-up interview with you at some point um, and maybe invite some other women to get involved as well because there's a topic um at, at now um that i feel very passionate about and that is young girls what's happening with young girls what's happening with child marriages what's happening with young girls being forced to do things that they don't want to do not receiving the education that they're supposed to be receiving so if we can get women together on that um, I would appreciate that no I think that's a great idea as a matter of fact uh, I'll suggest that we get the woman here the woman that you were talking about the women that work at the center that will be yeah. a good group of people to interview yes, yes. So right. let's do that. Let's do a, um, we'll talk behind the scenes. And then for those that are watching, please get involved. You know, Namibia is yeah. such a wonderful country. Yeah. And um, Marie Jean is such an incredible girl. And I can see that somebody's calling her. So we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> and I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you so much for just allowing um, us to talk to you. And just amaze, you amaze me. You know, and when <laughs> I'm in Namibia again, we're going to connect and we're going to do some stuff together. And yes, um, I'm going to say, yeah, and I'm going to say goodbye and have a fantastic day. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.